In this video, I'll explain what Zoho One is and how it works as a true all-in-one system. I'm Drew Brockbank, founder of Brockbank Consulting and a lead Zoho partner, and I've set up Zoho for over 141 organizations. So what is Zoho One? Well, Zoho One is a set of over 45 different applications that helps you to run your organization all from one system. I've got Zoho CRM here, helps me to manage everything relevant to sales, leads, deals, contacts, accounts, helps me to automate sales, helps me to keep track of all my information in one place. It's the heart of my tech stack. I've got marketing automation here to send texts, emails um, in mass to my contacts list. I've got Zoho projects to manage all my tasks, all the projects relevant to internal work and for my clients. I've got analytics here to manage all the reports and dashboards across my entire organization so that I can see what's going on from one place. I've got Zoho Books here for everything bookkeeping, Zoho Flow for all my integrations automations, I've got Zoho Sign to send out proposals, I've got Zoho Learn to send out SOPs, Vault to keep track of passwords, Click for internal communications, and on and on and on. Now you can start to see where this would be valuable, right? Instead of having Salesforce to manage all my sales and have Salesforce as my CRM, and then HubSpot Marketing Hub to create my drip campaigns, and then Monday.com to uh, manage all my work, and then try to make Monday and HubSpot talk to each other, and then HubSpot and Salesforce, and then Tableau for reporting, and then QuickBooks for finance and bookkeeping, and then Zapier for integrations automations, then DocuSign, and then one pass for vault management and then to keep track of all my passwords and then Slack for internal communication. Those are all third-party applications. You run into this software silo problem where you get more and more apps. We call that software sprawl. You're getting more and more applications to try to support your operations as you grow, but you can't keep track of all of them. They don't talk to each other. You have to do all these integrations via Zapier and all these automations and it gets jumbled. It feels like this giant mess you're trying to duct tape together. You avoid that with Zoho One because it's one system over 45 apps to run your entire organization from one place. And so that's the major value add. And I've just gone over a couple of these, right? There's over 45 applications here. So here's even more of those applications. But to show you the official list here, you can go to Zoho, uh, Zoho's website and you can see there's apps here for sales, marketing, support, We've got communication applications, collaboration, productivity, finance, operations, HR, business process, legal. And the thing about this is as you look through these, you'll start to say, okay, you know what? I could see myself using Zoho Desk for customer, customer support. We could use that. We could replace um, our form builder or Gravity Forms with Zoho Forms. I could see us replacing uh, HubSpot Marketing Hub with marketing automation. I could see us replacing Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics with Zoho CRM. And you can start to uh, bring your tech stack all into Zoho One, replace all of these third-party subscriptions and operate your entire organization from one platform. That's the goal of Zoho One. That's the objective. That's why people love Zoho One. They have a cult-like following. Well, how much does it cost? We talked about what it is what exactly is included as far as software applications. You can go through those in more detail, but how much does it cost? It says, pinch yourself. It's supposed to be a deal you can't refuse, which is all employee pricing. If you are a smaller organization, this will be more enticing to you, right? But what does all employee, all employee pricing mean? It means it's $37 per user per month billed annually, but you've got to get a license for every employee. So the smaller you are, the more it makes sense, right? Um, that you got all employee pricing. Now, you don't have to get Zoho One for every single employee. You don't have to. That's where you have flexible user pricing. And so it's really just a matter of you doing the math, right? So if you decide to just do it for a number of users and you're like, yeah, not everyone in our organization needs access to this, go with flexible user pricing. And then if that costs more than getting a license for every single person in your organization through this pricing, then go with all employee pricing. There's other things to consider there, right? But it's just a matter of you doing the math and determining what makes more sense, okay? Because even $90 per user per month billed annually with how much you can save with Zoho is something worth considering. You got monthly pricing and yearly pricing too, just to be transparent there, they are different. Finally, something to consider here, why should you trust Zoho? 
why not go with another platform? Well, one thing to consider with Zoho is they're trusted by over 130 million users globally by these giant organizations. You can see a list of them. These are some of their featured clients. So they're well-respected. They're heavily adopted throughout the world. They're a large platform. They've been around for a long time and they're trusted by over 130 million users globally. So with that, that's just to give you an idea of what Zoho One is, what exactly is included, how much does it cost? Why should you trust them? Now we're going to transition into a quick demo so that you can see how Zoho One looks in action. It'll help you better consider Zoho One for yourself. So what are the Zoho apps that most people are using all the time in Zoho One? Because not all the Zoho apps are made equal. So which ones are the A player applications? Zoho CRM, people are using that all the time. Some people use Zoho Biggin. It's like pipe drive. It's a simple CRM. I like CRM. More people are using that, obviously. Uh, I prefer to have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. And uh, Biggin just doesn't have as many features so that you got Zoho CRM. That's the one that uh, most people are using there. You've got Zoho Marketing Automation. Most people are using this or um, they're using Zoho Campaigns. And the difference there is Zoho Marketing Automation is more like uh, what you'd see in HubSpot Marketing Hub versus MailChimp uh, would be more similar to campaigns. So I prefer Marketing Automation because again, I'd rather have it and not need it, then need it, not have it. So I go with marketing automation. It's much more robust. A lot of people are using Zoho Social for managing uh, uh, social media uh, posts and interactions there. Zoho Forms, a lot of people are using that. Zoho Sales IQ to do live chats on their website, as well as collect visitor information, like how many visitors, how long did they stay on the page, things like that. Um, this, this is nice to have in addition to Google Analytics, by the way, Zoho sells like you on your, on your site, you just throw a piece of code on your site and then it can track those things. A lot of people are using those Zoho desk. A lot of people using Zoho desk for customer support. You want to provide customer support and you want to track tickets, ticket management, build a knowledge base, things like that. Customer support. It's great for that. A lot of people using Slack or sorry, Zoho click instead of Slack for internal communication. It's very similar, similar to Slack. Um, it's a better communication tool for internal communication. Lots of people are using Zoho projects for internal task management or just work management is what we call it. Any work that's got to get done, you got to manage it. Uh, Zoho projects is the place to do it. If you are doing agile, which is a different system for managing work, you can use Zoho sprints, but not as many people use that. Um, not many people use Zoho learn, but this is like a diamond in the rough. Definitely would recommend using Zoho learn to start, uh, store SOPs. Everyone's got to delegate. If you want to delegate and be fair about it, use Zoho Learn in our system for using Zoho Learn. It's a great way to do it. Lots of people using Work Drive. You get a lot of file storage there and you can move over from things like Google Drive or um, Microsoft. I think it's OneDrive. Uh, not as many people, I, I see a lot of people using uh, Zoho Sheets, um, but typically as a word processor, I'll use Google. Um, I'm a big Google Workspace person. I think it's better than the productivity suite there. That's just my opinion. That's kind of a style thing. Uh, a lot of people are using Zoho Sign to sign documents, to send things out for signature. Most organizations need to do some kind of document automation, signature gathering. It's a great place to do it. Um, in addition to that, you can use Zoho CRM for mail merge for the document automation piece. A lot of people using Zoho Vault to manage their passwords. Lots of people using Zoho Books up to snuff. I would say it's not as good as QuickBooks, but it's pretty good. So you can get most of what you need to do, uh, you need to do from an accounting perspective in Zoho Books. It's a great system. Um, next thing here, uh, Zoho inventory. If you got to manage inventory, um, coming in and going out, this is a great system. It, uh, is really nice to use in tandem with Zoho books. Okay. They play really nicely together at Zoho people. Lots of people use Zoho people for HR. Zoho recruit, not a ton of people using that, but if you need to, um, an application tracking system to manage who's coming in and out from a recruiting perspective, Great system there. Lots of people using Zoho Analytics. Almost everyone, almost everyone's using Zoho Flow, Zoho Creator, low code application builder. Helps you build apps from scratch. This is a very robust application. I see a lot of people using Zoho Creator. And those are the apps. I'd say those are a lot of the core apps, the apps that most people are using inside of Zoho One.